best friends on LinkedIn and colleagues on the Hour of Empower, Beverly Glazer, who you know is here every Tuesday, every Tuesday, and, and Charles, who is now making this three days in a row, was uh, was generous enough to uh, break through the end of the year and then break open the first of the year. Mm -hmm. and and. By happen chance, we're, we're fortunate to have Charles again. So chat is wide open. We depend on chat to make us as relevant as possible, direct our thoughts and, and uh, let's say hopefully good takeaways to justify your time, effort, and thought today. And I'm always open along with the panel to hear what your thoughts on Reboot is. So Beverly, since it's your word, why <laughs> open it up? and share what it means to you. <laughs> okay, Donald, love to. Um, yep, yeah, it's my word because I, well, it's the start of the year and everybody wants a fresh start. And actually, I don't believe in a fresh start. I believe it's continuous. And if you're looking for a fresh start, I don't think you're going to make it because your head goes with you wherever you go. So it, what you have to think of is it's just another day. This is the calendar. The calendar starts over, but you do not start over. You do not, you cannot start over. You can learn more, you can do more, you can become more, you can have continuous personal growth, which is really what I do. But it's helping you with your own head, with your own mindset to do more, be more, have more, not because it's a new year, not because it's a new day. It's because we keep on moving forward. So there is no magic switch. And that's what I think everybody has to see. There is no magic switch. And the funny thing, because I am resetting rather than rebooting to make sure that everything is working fine, clearing my desk, getting rid of all that other stuff that's accumulated, as everybody knows, that happens. But it's only because it is starting on that calendar year, not to reboot, but just for me, it's personally, it's like I want to clean up and kind of reset. And I've been listening to some YouTube videos and the commercials, the advertising is unbelievable. It's all about the beginning of the year. It's all about changing your life magically with this magic potion. And everybody wants to do that. And, you know, why not? It's so easy, but it's fantasy. So I think everybody's mindset has to change one person at a time <laughs> to say, it's okay the way you are. It really is. You don't have to magically drop 20 pounds. Why do you want to do it? What's your why? That's all it really is. And if it's for that dress, that's not good enough. And if it's because you want to look good at your wedding, that's not good enough. And the reason for that is you can drop those 10 pounds, but they'll come back 20. So what we're talking about right now is rebooting. We're talking about resetting. We're also talking about rethinking. And what you have to see is it's okay the way it is. You don't have to magically change. All you have to do is one day at a time, think of what you want to do, now is the time for growth. But by the way, it could have been last month. It could have been the month before. It's always now, not because of the calendar at all. It's because now I want to do it. Now I am making my change because it matters. And your why matters, not for anyone else, but for yourself. So I'm just going to pass this on to you, Charles, because you're coming from a totally different mindset, which is reboot. Computers is what you do. So let me hear what you have to say there. Well, I would echo and build on what you've talked about, Beverly. I would look at it 
I would draw upon some of our technological terms, reboot. And, you know, whenever you have a, com whenever the computer is not operating properly, one of the first questions I'll ask people, if they ask me about their computer, I'll say, did you try rebooting it? Did on your, is your iPhone your, or your Android not working properly? Did you do a soft reboot? Did you do a hard reboot? So the, it's the same thing. If you have goals that, you know, maybe you didn't start them on January 1, that doesn't mean you can't start them on January 2, whether it could be a soft reboot, a hard reboot, it's a reset that you're talking about. The other computer analogy I would look to would be gaming. And we all know that gaming can be bad at times if you game too much, but let's suppose gaming has positive analogies for us. One positive analogy is people work very, very hard to get up to different levels, but they don't always get to those levels without failures and without, you know, literally depending on the game, getting killed off mm -hmm. in the game. What do they do? Do they put down the control panel and walk away and say, forget it? Well, probably at some point, hopefully, so they don't spend their whole life gaming. But most gamers are going to say, oh, I have to start again. And they'll respawn. They'll reboot. They'll start again. And I think that that's a key message for people to understand. If it's March you know, 20th and something goes wrong in your life, it doesn't mean you have to work, wait till January 1st to reset. You can reset right there on that day and we can reboot right there on that day. Yeah, I think both of you really bring up whole new or maybe a little different perspective than most people because especially uh, relating to what Beverly said, why make time another challenge in addition mm -hmm. to your reinvention or renewal or whatever you want to call it? If you set a time like in 30 days, I have to lose 20 pounds. And I agree with the why will keep you going. There's a saying, if your why is big enough, you'll figure the how to, mm -hmm. right? Because it's just too important not to get, not to keep going. And perseverance ultimately wins every game. The person who can't, who won't and can't quit can't lose, right? Because the game keeps playing. You know, they, they may be so far behind, but who knows who gives up before them, mm -hmm. right? And, and it is a long game. And you should play for a long game. So saying January 1st, I have to be a new person. Well, you never were a new person any day before this. Why? Because of the date. You know, mm -hmm. and that's, it's easy to declare. And I think when people scream it enough and they hear it, that they're the ones who are screaming it, they think it's possible until action has to take place. And I think that's the key element is yeah. even if you're humbled and modest and, and you're, you're very thoughtful towards yourself, if you don't go forward and do something, that, that's when you find out what you can do is when you actually go out and try to do it. So before we swing it back, let's recognize our faithful and wonderful <laughs> audience, Kelly, who was here the last two days also, uh, wants to say hello. Good morning, hey, Kelly. 2024. Uh, you know, and, and also people make the year possible, the hope possible, because yeah. if I can't do it, could we do it? Or together, could we all get it done? Hello, Harvey says. Uh, hey, great Harvey. to see you, Harvey. Harvey's the big success story, number one <laughs> franchise show in just seven weeks out there. Congratulations. And uh, got the newsletter going. It's really working. You know, what I want to tell everybody, you want something to work, you got to work it. Oh, yeah. Right? You got to put it in before you can even think of getting something out. And it's so small in the beginning, you don't want to, it's, you want to fortify it. So, uh, Charles, one more point, uh, uh, comment from Dennis. Agree, now matters to grow, learn, and reboot. Still give a hoot to help yourself and others. For sure. Dennis is our uh, poet laureate here. Charles? <laughs> Uh, what, what's your thoughts towards, uh, I guess, perspective of what reboot is to some people? I think what people need to really reboot, look at rebooting as, and a fresh start as, is something that as we discussed yesterday a little bit. It is informed by the past, but it's not limited by the past. And people can, as Beverly says, people can start, they can reset at any point in their life. Often what holds people back is that, that all, your own limitation that you put on yourself. 
So you'll see going into December, people will give up on their diets, for example, or give up on their exercise and say, okay, January 1 will be the start. But really, will it be? Because what's really different, it's, you know, technically it's just a day and the, the media, society, community makes it up to be a big momentous of change. Now, it's true that you can get a certain amount of momentum out of that, but Strava is going to tell you that Quitter's Day is the second Friday in January every single mm -hmm. year, which is when people are most likely to give up on their physical fitness goals going into a new year. Yeah, and, and you know, I think when people look at what the general population does, it gives them context. When they know they're in the majority of joiners and quitters, right? But what it did show is they wanted to do something, they wanted to buy something, they wanted to introduce something, but everything wasn't a magic bullet, you know? Everything was an effort. And I think that's really the conditioning people should get into is can you take on an effort initiative, stick with it, learn from it, grow with it, meet people who can help you along with it. You know, it's, it's not too, that independent that one can achieve great success. And if you can, it's even harder to achieve great happiness with success. So Beverly, you, you, you are, uh, so experienced in helping people become more successful or happier. Uh, so yeah. I could see where reboot would be something right up your alley. Oh, yes. I'm rebooting people all the time, but I hate to use that word. <laughs> it's just maybe making tweaks, you know, and that's really what it's about. When we say we're going to reboot or we're going to fire up or we're going to be different or we're going to go, we're looking for the gold, but the gold is not in the goal. The goal really is, they say in cliche, the journey. And what you have to look at is the baby steps, the little wins. The little wins will get you there, but we're always looking at our failures. And when we look at our failures, it's much like Charles said, you know, I'm quitting the game. I lose every time. But if you're going to say, hey, you know what? Let me give it another shot. Let me see how I can do this. Let me see what changes. What can I do? What was working for me last year? What did I like doing? And let's go back to the diet because it's so easy. When you go back to the diet, you say, you know, what was working for me? Not that I failed the diet, but maybe it's this ridiculous diet that I'm on and I'm starving to death. So perhaps I fell off because I'm trying too hard, but you know, I learned in this diet that I like cabbage. So cabbage isn't such a bad food. Whatever it is, you can tweak it to say what can work for you. And that's why Weight Watchers has been so good. Weight Watchers is good because there's a community and because it's generally balanced and you can eat everything. Can that work for you? For some people, they don't like the community. Maybe they want to go to the gym, have a coach, whatever it is, it's tweak it to make it work for you. What's working, not what's not working. When we go with the failure, as you know, Charles, in the education field, it's the same thing. You go for the kids that are not successful and you try to get them and you focus on, you know, their failure rather than, hey, this is really good. It's discouraging. Well, it's the same with adults. We have to encourage ourselves. We have to not look at, oh, I take a look at this ad. I dropped 150 pounds in six weeks, whatever, whatever. Okay. And then you expect to do it too. No, if you went down two pounds, that's great. Just keep going. And that's where you need to psych yourself out. So it's not necessarily a reboot. Maybe it's a reframe of your mindset. And that leads to success because it's one day at a time and it's baby steps. And if you just encourage yourself with that, it's a win. It's always about the win. Go for the win. Well, I think that's terrific because it does put it in a really easy perspective for people to see. What I would add, because, you know, coming through the holiday week, 
you know, with the food, with the dessert, with the permission that it's New Year's, the permission it's Christmas, and I could have that extra piece of chocolate cake or whatever. I think, again, to your point, diet is easy because everybody deals with it every day, right? It may not be a priority, but everybody has their choices and their what they choose to eat and not eat and how much and when and blah, blah, blah. But I found is if you're a participant in your journey and in your new effort, you want to be less rigid. You want to give yourself some room, you know, and I was a member of Weight Watchers and I lost 42 pounds in 21 weeks. And my wife lost 40 pounds in 22 weeks. We did it together. And my daughter lost 20 pounds. <laughs> she was part of the family. Uh, but in, and what I learned from the meetings, and I even apply here, is when you're up, the meetings need you. When you're down, you need the meetings. Mm -hmm. And I still stayed with the meetings three years after I hit my goal. And if you stay within your goal, you never have to pay. So you get like, they call it. <laughs> over your goal so so the point is is you have to visualize the goal of saying i'm going to lose 20 pounds or whatever mm -hmm. versus that extra cookie tastes so good right now so yeah. if your overall goal is the thing that drives you you won't take that cookie you know mm -hmm. and i think that's the key and then other times if you give yourself flexibility and room and to Charles's point with the with the gaming thing, when you lose, you get back in the game. You don't call yourself a loser, you know. And even Weight Watchers, I was going to add, they give you one day of splurging. Right? So you get so many points, and then Saturday night you get like double. <laughs> they know you can only last so long, and that's why I encourage if you have a taste for something, satisfy it because eventually you'll ravish it when you, when you finally break the chains. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Charles, you know, this is fascinating how, especially one last thing with LinkedIn, you're dealing with a billion people. Mm -hmm. If you feel we're good at working with people, helping people and supporting people, and now a billion people out of a billion, that's more than we could ever even fathom dealing with at our stage. Mm -hmm. What can we do to make an influence on people the way we have done things one-on-one -on -one or small physical groups where we could create an hour of power that lights up the world with the ability to stick with it one more day, right? So that would be the goal. Don't quit yet, you know? Give it one more day, give it one more show. And hopefully what I found only two point. 2% of people are over 55 here. How many mentors are available over 55 who have the time, the experience, the desire to be relevant? And I think that's where things go. So anyways, that's a bigger vision than rebooting. Carol, let's get back to her. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'd like to add to the food conversation and those breaks that you get through Weight Watchers or another program that I use that's been very successful for me is Noom. Um, is sometimes those breaks, the Saturday night break and the, you know, don't do anything today, take a break today, don't track your diet today, are all about helping people bust up the myths that they have about food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people and will say, you know, that they're, that food is off limits to them. And ultimately what you want to get to a point is that you don't have to say that certain types of foods are off limit to you. You can enjoy those foods in moderation when the time is right and it works for your diet. Because if something is off limits to you, it's restricting, it's not empowering. And it's the same thing with any goal or any activity that you're working on. Another thing that's, as I've been listening to the two of you, another thing that's helpful to think about is this concept called habit bundling, which is if you have a habit that you love and then you have another habit that you're not so keen on. So for example, you don't like putting in 10,000 steps a day try to join two habits together. So <clears throat> if you, I think Don, you talked about this the other day, you love listening to audiobooks. So when you go out on your, if you're not walk, talking, you're walking. When you go out on your daily walk, you can listen to an audiobook. That's a form of habit bundling. 
and people can really look at what are the habits they love and what are the habits that they're trying to push themselves into to achieve and bundle habits together to um, get that empowerment effect. Yeah. That's terrific, Beverly. Well, let's, yeah. let's recognize Harvey. Harvey had a good comment uh, and here it comes. Charles Caldwell, do you watch the IT crowd? Have you tried turning it off and on again? I think we're all rebooting all the time. Every little knock or even boost needs a little reboot. I think of rebooting is adapting, testing, trying, and improving. And I think that's so important because to Beverly's point, it's the little things done right over time that you recognize that makes you feel capable. People give up because it's not that it's too hard. It's actually easier as you spend more time understanding it and trying it. It's you don't feel up to it. Right, and that's why other people's encouragement. And I remember one last thing about Weight Watchers. We used to clap when some lady would say, I went on a cruise ship and only gained three pounds. <laughs> about losing it because usually it would be eight pounds or 10 pounds. So, exactly. You know, I like that, Beverly. So what, what's your <laughs> Oh, I definitely like that, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, oh, that's good. Um, yeah, I want to go back to uh, Charles's point with habit bundling, because that could be with anything. That's really a good tactic. And it's particularly good with procrastination. And this at this time of year, also, you say, you know, I don't want to procrastinate anymore. Well, that's great. Set that as a goal. And you're going to see, you're going to do the same thing next month or the, same, or the next day. Um, bottom line is, and I, when I say this to anybody, you really don't want to do it, do you? And they say, oh, yeah, no, I really do. I really do want to do it. You know, my wife is on my case or, you know, I do want to clean up this room. No, no, I don't think you really want to do it, right? And they say, yeah, I do. And then before you know it, it's like, no, I really don't. I hate to admit it, but those bills are there and I don't even want to look at it, whatever it is, right? In every week. So the bottom line is when you're procrastinating, you do not want to do it, but you don't want to admit that to yourself. It's like, yes, I will. So you could say, you know, maybe a little passive aggressive, you know, my wife has been nagging me, so maybe I'm not going to do it until I do it, let her, whatever, whatever the game goes, right? But the bottom line is, when you do see those bills or you are avoiding something, you are affected by whatever you see. And that's where that procrastination comes in. However, if you bundle that with something that you do like, then what you do is you give yourself a treat. It's much like that going on the cruise. I only lost three pounds or gained three pounds or, or stabilized my weight. Whatever your treat is for you, make it fun. And that's the same with anything that you don't want to do. And the bottom line is anything we really want to do, I mean, really want to do, let me tell you, we do it. Ask any drug addict, okay? <laughs> they'll find the money or you'll find the booze. You'll find whatever it takes to do whatever you want to do. So those bills, nah, not so much. I don't really want to do that. So admit it to yourself and then play a game with yourself or say, okay, today is the day that I'm going to make sure that I'm going to do it. But tell yourself, believe that you're going to do it, set an intention and do it and you'll feel good, but break it up. Don't make it into this tremendous chore because once that mountain is there, we don't want to climb it. So the habit bundling is a really great strategy to get anything done. A little music, maybe a little video, you know, maybe reading, going out for a walk. Give yourself whatever treat you want and it'll just make life so much easier for you. Yeah, you know, I, I think you make, uh, again, so many quality points is everything is context, everything's relative, mm -hmm. and everything is accepting yourself for being who you are, because let's talk about what happens if you don't reboot. Yeah. Right? What, what happens is you're now on an old system 
that's trying to connect and align with a new system. And what do you get? Dissonance. You get some things work now and some things don't work. Some things don't work as well. You know, not dealing with it is a way of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Because what you're saying is, I'm going to carry it forward. Now, if tomorrow had room for carrying forward or loud room that says, yeah, take 40% of yesterday into today and we'll make space for it. But no, you're going to get 100% tomorrow of tomorrow. Now you're going to have 40% of what you didn't do. And to me, it's like, I just like getting things done. I, I always left my office with a clean desk. I never came back to anything. Either I took care of it, decided I wasn't going to deal with it. You know, it's the same thing if you go in your refrigerator. You keep buying more and more food that you stack on top of food that you already have bought. <laughs> Sitting there, making it harder to find even the new good food. And at a certain point, I say, are we going to eat this stuff or not? Right? And if we are, let's eat it. If we're not, let's give it away or throw it away, get some space, and just buy what we eat. You know, you, you ask yourself, how close are you to a grocery store or Costco or something? So how far can you replenish? we got to say there's enough food here to get me to the grocery store, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you need. But anyway, if you're getting a little bit far off, I think huh. in putting it back to reboot, I think someone would have to look at is being honest with themselves. Mm -hmm. if I'm happy the way I look and I'm comfortable with it. That's where I should be. Right. When you say I got to lose weight to be like them or to look like them or feel like them right there, you're starting off with a dishonest approach. Right. And the other thing is, if people don't like you for who you are, find new people. <laughs> right? I mean, if it's not a fit, just accept it. Thank it for getting to a position where you can pivot. But no, you have control of you. You have yeah. control of your next action, your next thought, and whatever came from that, you're responsible for. And if you want to keep hearing that, or how long would you listen to somebody who told you that before you'd say, I had enough of this, I'm, I'm leaving, right? So uh, I forget where we left off. Uh, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, I think, Charles, what do you think, Charles? Well, two things I want to add on to your, your comments about the grocery store. I think that that is a good time to stop and express gratitude that we have that ability to go out and buy food, to bundle, to pack it on top of food, because a lot of people might not be in that uh, particular situation. Very true. And it's been very interesting being here in Saskatoon because the, I guess you'd call it the free cycling movement is much further along. And also um, Saskatoon, like <clears throat> many cities in North America, um, has an element of homelessness that they're dealing with. And it's been really amazing to me to see how much the people I've been around, if they have extra things that they don't need, how quickly they'll put it out to the community to just come and get it um, as a way to helping the community. So I think there's really something in there about gratitude. But moving back to habit bundling, there's another um, trick which is called the if this, then that rule, which is another really great rule for people to consider when they're rebooting or resetting their lives. So um, <clears throat> the formula is if this, then that. So for example, if I arrive home, then I automatically put my phone on mute. If I have a family dinner, I leave my phone somewhere other than the family dinner table. And uh, then the how this can work with goal setting or physical movement is if you are in the middle of your day and you find you have 15 extra minutes, you can say, if I have a few extra minutes, then go walk around the block as a way to get activity, as a way to reset your mind and refresh your mind. Well, My wife is giving me the evil eye right now. She can't believe I've just said that about mobile phones and the dinner table. <laughs> Well, Beverly, I mean, I think you're agreeing with what Charles was saying about mobile phones. Yeah. Because, you know, I think what it lends itself to is attention. It's like you could get things done if people would pay attention, if people would just take an extra minute and focus. So now you have to get people's attention, and most people's attention is short. Because they're used to TikTok and Instagram and, and Facebook, where they just keep going, scrolling, scrolling, where they actually have to sit and listen to somebody or actually worse talk, 
What do you think, Beverly? Different time. Oh, uh, yeah, no, Charles, the thought that came to mind, which I'm just kind of laughed to myself with a client who, when I did that technique, says, oh, this isn't going to work for me because I'm going to go and get my phone. So what he did was he put it in the garage. And so, <laughs> so we had to go downstairs. And sure enough, I mean, this was an executive. And of course, all over the world, you know, you're going to get calls and he has to check his phone all the time, et cetera, et cetera. And he found himself at midnight running down to the garage <laughs> to check his phone, <laughs> which was in his car. <laughs> it, was, it was hiding it double. So sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> but when I thought of that, I thought, you know, yes, it's a great strategy. Another thing we also do forget with this reboot is this sprint and stop and then sprint and stop. So we could be really focused and really working at something and really working hard, but our brains don't work like that. We cannot really do productive work for more than a good hour without a break. We need those breaks and that makes us more productive. And you say, no, 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 I have to finish. I have to finish. And what happens is we start making mistakes. And if we keep on going on that track, we end up burning out. And that we don't want to do. And you have to remember that people do burn out, much like cars or anything else, we're exhausted. So we have to balance. And I hate that word because people hate saying, I hate my life in balance and all that sort of stuff. But no, we need to have time to break. We need to know that we have to get up from the desk. We know that we have to get outside. To your point, Charles, you know, just walk out the door, get out, change your mindset, and then get right back in. And that doesn't have to be a sprint a stop, a start, or, oh my gosh, I have to just, you know, do all this work and then get away because I just can't take it anymore. And you just want silence. You don't want people. No, that's because you've done too much. So it's really self-regulating that will get you going and get you up to exactly where you go. But it's not a sprint and it's not a stop and it's not a crash. It's just a consistent wave. And some days can be better than others, some minutes better than others, but it doesn't have to die. It doesn't have to crash. So I was just kind of adding to that. Well, I think you made some excellent points again. I think one can equate reboot with refuel too. Yes. Right? Yes. Is, is, yes. is to get, you know, and, and to your point, when you're out of gas, it's time to, to, to refuel. Right. Yes. You go to a gas station and the car's stopped. Right. You put it in your garage and you charge your car and it's stopped. So when you find you're low on energy, low on thought, low on enthusiasm, you need to go into the garage. Right. Mm -hmm. And fuel and do the things like family, mm -hmm. things, happy things, hobbies, whatever it is that, that you are working for. And now mm -hmm. you have opportunity to taste a little bit of it so one day when you work enough and you're successful you can have all of it mm -hmm. i think the other thing is is when you're working with enough people you become less concerned about yourself and more interested in them what they're saying what you can learn from them and it makes time move faster i know mm -hmm. i looked at shows over the weekend my first shows were eight or nine minutes it was me I see 90% of the shows just like it that are really quality people are just them, you know, and I can only do eight minutes of me. Uh, <laughs> when the second person showed up, I actually, uh, uh, Tara Gooch, uh, we got to 30 minutes. There was no hour of power. We just did a show until we were showed out. And then mm -hmm. eventually when you get to a regular group and you get a third person, you could go two hours especially if everybody is stimulating everybody else's thoughts, memories, experiences, mm -hmm. is adding a piece that maybe no one thought of for a while or never thought of and says, wow, that's that little extra something I could apply to what I have to make it special. And knowing just like gold mining, that nugget is in that water, right? It's like who's going to pan for it and who's going to identify mm -hmm. it and, and take advantage of it. So, uh, 
Char well, let's let's get to Charles's comments because. Uh, okay, here it is. Well, the ticker's a little bit uh, off today. Here it is. It's never too late to become who you want to be. I hope you live a life that you're proud of. And if you find that you're not, I hope you have the strength to start over to reset the reboot. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Well, that's that's quite a quote. Harvey comes back with uh, Donald Cohen. You're right. Is just a day. Every day can be full of exciting change. So if it wasn't for the Romans, we would only have ten months, day or night, winter or summer. The time for action is now. All mm -hmm. you have is now. That's, that's it. That's a sure thing. You can count on all you're ever going to have is the now you're in everything else is past or yet to show up charles comes back with um you can learn new things at any time in your life if you're willing to be a beginner if you actually learn to like being a beginner the whole world opens up to you far for sure hey that's an interest i, I told you charles is mm -hmm. a stuff. <laughs> meet and greet people when you can for sure people are everything that's what makes life fulfilling is sharing it with other mm -hmm. people, supporting other people, you know, following other people. That gives leaders a lot of balance and humility. Uh, Dennis says, uh, don't just diet, but tweak it and live it for sure. Uh, here's a, here's a uh, comment from Good Morning All Beginnings. Indeed, every morning we have the opportunity to shape our world the way we choose to, and mm -hmm. that's the joy of it. You choose what clothes you decide to put on, what food you start your day with, what activity you want to do or not do, everything. And you know how many options and choices you have today? When I grew up, there were three TV channels. Except for the personalities, the news was identical. You could just switch them to the same stories. And you went out and played. You went to the library. You went. You did. You mm -hmm. met. Here, everything would dial it in, right? And now you have so many choices and people are confused. People are overwhelmed, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think getting back to people again is, is a good change. And with virtual opportunities like this, it's possible. Habit bundling, sometimes referred to as temptation bundling, works by linking an action that you don't really want to do with something you need to do. It is very useful to for people want to build on their healthy habits but are struggling. So right, you know, I do these audible books. I can't wait to start walking so I can catch up where I left off and the walking becomes secondary. And before you know it, you did two hours instead of an hour because you got caught up in it. Uh, habit bundling sometimes. Okay, we I think we, we, we covered this. There's another one. Uh, what is if this then that? One of the fundamental principles of this and that rules is that input determines output. In other words, if one thing happens, make something else happen automatically. For example, I, I, perfect. Back again, Charles is so prodigious. What is, is this one, one, okay, I think we repeated that, Harvey. We got some good juicy ones today. Charles, Paul, you are you are quite the multitasker. I being on the show and commenting on the show at the same time, impressed. I need to repeat to get the multitask update. You know, one thing about Harvey, he's always trading up. You know, uh -huh. always reaching for the next step instead of avoiding it. And I think that's the opposite of procrastination. It is proactive. As soon as the door opens, I want to be the first one through it. People who love open field running, you know, if you ever follow the sport, and all of a sudden someone breaks free and it's nothing but open field. I mean, the joy of everybody surrounding that person in that activity you know, makes all the difference. Carol is here. Carol's every other Wednesday and part of the collaboration group. And after you read this morning's news, you have the ability to adapt and adjust to the new world. And you get a chance to read what news you want or, or none at all. So Beverly. Well, there's so much to say in so many different directions. I have to say that. Um, yeah. Um, okay. We do have so much opportunity. And sometimes it can be too much. It comes at us all the time in so many different ways. That one way of rebooting is not to do anything. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. All this stimuli comes up. I should do this. I'm watching TikTok. I'm watching this. Hey, look at this. I'm missing this. I'm missing out. FOMO. It's all out there. So back in the day when you were saying, Dawn, that there were three channels and nothing to watch, okay, although you might have been watching nothing, there was more time for creativity. There was more time for stopping thinking and thinking in different directions and painting and doing and, you know, just exploring. And we have to continue to make that time for ourselves because although technology has changed us, we are human and we have not changed. Sorry about that if we think we've really advanced. No, our language has gotten better perhaps, we understand more but we still have the same feelings and the same thoughts as literally the crave man. They want shelter, they want peace, you name it, okay? We're all the same. And so what we need is to be able to check out. We also need just to create, to think. And so instead of writing, and I know I do so much copywriting and I do, and thank goodness for all the AI that's helping me out in many different directions, but it just makes me work faster. It doesn't make me work less. I'm the one that has to put the stop on that. I'm the one that has to calm myself so that I can reboot. Because what happens is if you keep on doing, like I was saying before, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to start thinking negatively. You start going down the how hole, literally. How do I get out of this? How do I fix it? How, what can I do? Rather than just thinking, checking out, literally. I'm a great fan of meditation when I do it daily, just to be able to set your mind, just to have clarity. Because as soon as it's boots on the ground, everything starts coming at you. And I think we have to understand that our world is not getting slower. It's getting faster. So how do we adapt? Because we are not machines. We have to slow down. We have to understand what's good for me, what's not good for me. Each one of us is unique and we have to know ourselves. And when we slow down, guess what? We do pick up. We pick up so much faster than when we just keep on forging ahead. And so I think the whole key is really to understand ourselves. What do we want to do? What is our goal? What are our baby steps? And what are our wins to get to that goal? But don't just aim for the goal because every little win is one step closer. Well, that's fascinating because of what comes to mind is just a short period of time ago, people would compete with other people, yeah. right? That was the game, right? You and other people. And some people would have an advantage of money, education, culture, many circumstances. And that was typically the division between people who achieved more and people who didn't. Then you get to people who have machines and people who don't in addition to that first layer of differentiation. And now you have machines mm -hmm. who are beyond the people who invented them. And what one has to understand is what are your tolerances? How much can you tolerate and still be healthy? Because unlike machines, you just can't put another hard drive in you, right? If you collapse, if, if you get sick, now you have an additional burden in addition to the other challenges. So your goal is to stay happy and healthy. That's why most New Year's is have a happy, healthy New Year, right? Because that's the two most important things you can hope for for the coming year is that I'm going to be healthy, I'm going to be happy, which probably means everybody around me is healthy and happy. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's too late, in a sense, to put the genie back in the bottle. And now people are learning how to influence people with their messaging, with their communication, and moving whole thoughts and ideas and now actions from it. And AI now is only going to make that more opaque. Hester. 
as mm-hmm. far as reality and, and not reality. And then people are going to wonder, who wants to go back to that old reality? Who wants to work? Who wants to have to leave your house? You know, if all the machines can deliver everything you need, what, you just have a bunch of couch potatoes. So it's scary in a way. But I also believe in the resiliency of people and the, the ability for people to see the light and say, hey, let's get back to where we were and use these conveniences in a way that serves everybody better than the other extreme. So, you know, it, 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 it's more and more activity that needs to go into what you do than it used to be when you didn't have a lot of options, a lot of choices. So how disciplined are you not to die at some time? Charles, I think well, I think that I think that we're still competing. I think that the majority of society and community is still competing. And possibly when you look around the world and see all the polarization that's taking place, the competition competition has gotten even more intense. McKinsey and Company did a really interesting study coming out of the pandemic where they looked at corporate clock speeds and how quickly companies were able to implement initiatives such as online learning for schools or collaboration tools for companies and work from home, use collaboration tools to work from home. And they implemented them at factors that were 30, 40, 50 times faster than anybody had any imagination could have happened before the pandemic. What I observe around the world is that the corporate clock speeds have not slowed down. And this is why we're seeing so many people dealing with burnout and just horrendous well-being issues. They're all You look in any country, it's an exception that a country does not have well-being issues within its main workforce. And this is why what we're talking about and what Beverly's pointed to, this important of being able to look after your well-being, to slow down, to get that quiet time is so critical. Just a quick, yeah. quick story. I went to a, um, I've been to many neuro leadership conferences, highly recommend them if anyone has a chance to go to them. And they have a gentleman there who speaks um, and he works at the Institute of the Future. And at one time that he was speaking, he got a question from the audience, what do you think is the biggest barrier to the future for the planet? And everybody thought that he would come out and say military conflict, political polarization, the environment. And he says, honestly, after working at the Institute for the Future for 30 to 40 years, the biggest barrier to the future for the human race is lack of quiet time. He says, everybody should be taking 30 to 40 minutes a week, at least once a week, have a coffee or a tea, whatever your favorite beverage is, on a quiet Saturday morning or Sunday morning, and just have a look at your goals, have a look at your relationships, how are you doing? Are you on track? Are you off track? Do you need to reboot? Do you need to reset? Mm-hmm. Do you need to have a new beginning that Monday? He said, if every person on the planet, especially leaders, did that once a week, we might have a different situation now on the planet. Yeah. Thank you for that, Charles. Because when I work with my elite clients, that is how I help them most. They lose their families. They lose literally their life, what they really want in this world. They lose their soul because they cannot stop. The machine is running them. The business is running them. Other people, contacts throughout the world are running them and they don't know how to stop. And Yes, coaching, someone behind the scenes, someone, it's not a privilege anymore. It's become a necessity, and I believe it's going to be more and more so. Having someone really behind the scenes, someone that has your back, somebody that can put a stop to your own brain is what is so very important because times are going quicker and faster. And, um, I mean, I didn't have the data but yeah, that is so right on. I just see it from the ground level. And uh, I just thank you for that. It's so true. And it's not going to get better. It's not going to get better. We have to be able to stop the madness and see it before the heart attack's coming. And then we get 
body part replacements, right? And we go right back. So, yeah, thank yeah, you for that. You know, it compounds it because everybody around you is dealing with it in their own way. So even if you can escape yeah. it or over yeah. overcome it, your kids are dealing with it, and you got to watch out for them. I mean. Carly has a comment here that says, I use this show as my daily hour of meditation. And that's what nice. I'm hoping shows like this do, is bring mm -hmm. people together face-to-face -face in real time, with real thought, with uh, un inability to understand what is going to be said, how it's going to be said, what's going to be learned, mm -hmm. which brings you back to the magic of creativity, imagination. Here's what I just thought, where... Now it's, here's what I just thought, let me throw it through AI. Let me do this, dress it up. And all of a sudden it appears so much better, but it's not the essence anymore, no. right? You're, you're, you're taking a little something and surrounding it and coating it with stuff to uh, Charles's point, bundling. How many people put uh, candy on medicine, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, they're never gonna drink this with this taste. So let's throw some peppermint or, sure. or, or, or cherry flavor. And uh, Harvey says, and I gotta give a, a, a uh, shout out to Harvey. Sorry, we have to go and get ready for my show now. Really enjoyed the show. Thanks, Don, of course, our wonderful community. Harvey is always so thoughtful, polite, uh, and, and is the model of that. Everything we do duplicates through somebody else, either thought mm -hmm. or a action. We have to be thoughtful. What are we passing along, you know? And I think that's where community is gonna be more and more important because family is not enough anymore. It doesn't serve everybody the way it could and used to, right? I remember growing up, everybody ate dinner together. Mm -hmm. And that's all you did was eat dinner and talk. There was no machines, mm -hmm. there was no running from something to something to get to something. It's always like where the best times are spent is where they're most compromised or where the worst times will be spent. Why? Because people are so used to immediate gratification. You know, you got these like slot machine games that says now you can win a, a trillion points on a jackpot. <laughs> it's like, what's a billion points? What's a trillion? What's 10 points? But it's like, wow, you know? And, and then here's uh, one more. Okay, I think, well, to, to Harvey's point, his show is the franchise show, it follows his show, and then mm -hmm. Kelly's show, The Awesome Journey, follows Harvey's show. So we got a triple header today, every Tuesday, and all our shows mm -hmm. are, are really building off of each other, from each other, and that's the, the knowledge share that you get through co collaboration, through community, everybody doing a lot in their own way can teach everybody so much faster who's mm -hmm. already in it. And that was the reason for the collaboration group. So with that, Charles, I mean, we've covered a lot of ground in just 53 minutes. I mean, this could have been enough for three books. <laughs> <laughs> What's your thoughts, Charles? I think it's a fascinating conversation. I think we've um, hit on some really, really critical topics. But I really think that you know, people, uh, I put, I just posted a comment here that gaming is much like life. Um, and when a gamer responds, the player's character is brought back into the game world after being defeated or eliminated. And it's a fundamental, you know, mechanic of the gaming world, but it's also a good lesson for us to get back into the game when we feel defeated or when we feel we need a reset. And it's, uh, you know, you could, you could even say, okay, my weekly quiet time on Saturday morning is going to be when I respawn. I take myself out of the game on Friday night. I get a good night's rest. The next morning I sit there and have some quiet time. And then I respawn on Monday. You know, that would be a great gaming analogy. <laughs> well, you know what? So we, uh, before I turn back to Beverly, you know, I'm always around, I got kids and grandkids and they're playing video games and some of the worst games, I just blood everywhere, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. battle games, you know, where this monster is given. I mean, and I keep asking everybody, isn't there something where you can like build a garden and it's just, <laughs> I think there is <laughs> very positive that you can still have all the thrill of competition but you're not exposing yourself to skulls flying around. It's like, what, yeah, what well, for, people? 
for many years, my kids and I played Minecraft. In fact, if it was yeah. a really rainy, nasty day on a holiday or at home in Hong Kong, the five of us, uh, we could never get my wife to join, but the five of us would create a world and we would just play Minecraft together. But my mm -hmm. condition was, I will only play creative uh, because that's the fun part where you're building things. I don't like going into survival because all of the zombies come and try to kill me. I say, okay, if you're going to play zombie, I'm getting out of the game. I, I think I think to your point, Carl, it's the parent that has to be the lead here. Um, I see the other side. I see the very dark side of the gaming mm -hmm. industry. Um, I a lot of gaming addiction, yep. and they cannot stop. They really cannot stop, and it's it has all kinds of other psychological connotations. And gaming is just part of it. However. Um, it is for the parent on everything to be able to advise the child. You're lucky enough if there is a, a model, a parent, a grandparent, somebody that says, hey, you know, put that aside because um, kids can escape into that world really, really quickly. And what we're talking about is taking time out, not adding more stress. Yeah. And that's what happens. It gets away from people. Um, you can be playing online with your friends and other people that you have no clue who they are, whatever. It's a whole world out there, but it's really for the parent and the child to understand that it's not a punishment when the, the parent comes in and says, okay, let's do something else or let's play this to make it more fun. But that's a whole other area. I think for us as adults now, we have to know, just as you said, put our own our own boundaries there saying, now it's time. I have to pull myself away from this work or this machine or this game. Time to talk to my wife. Maybe she's alone for a little while. Maybe there's a reason she's complaining. You know, let's put more humanity into your life. It's not all work. What are we working for, right? And that's the point. We're working to get better. We're working to feel better. We're working to be healthier. And look at the wins. I think the tips here should really be reflect what works for you. Look back at what you want to do more with. Prioritize self-care. We've been talking about that throughout this whole time. Um, manage your finances so you're not stressed out about where tomorrow is going to be. Put it together. Slow down and do what we really need to do for ourselves. It's all about us, right? It's not for the boss, the manager, the world, others to be impressed with just you and then happy new year that would be it <laughs> well yeah, yeah my, go ahead charles yeah and my closing comment would be for people to first of all uh, just a, a safety note on the gaming analogies i think the gaming analogies are great but um it is very uh, beverly you're absolutely right there's a lot of downside to gaming and it's quite scary how many of these games are created to build aggression and um, different types of chemical releases and things like that. But setting that aside on what we've really talked about today, rebooting and resetting, I really encourage people to trust their instincts. And the chief beauty about time, which we all have, is that you cannot waste time in advance. Uh, the next year, the next day, the next hour are lying ready for you, as perfect and as unspoiled as if you'd never wasted or misapplied a single moment in all of your life. So it doesn't matter if it's New Year's, January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, or the middle of the year. You can turn over a new leaf every hour you, if you choose and trust your instincts and do that. That's that's wonderful. Yeah. Hard to finish. This has been a great show. And, you know, what it relates to is, you know, my grandkids have taken up an instrument. My granddaughter's into bass and my grandson took up saxophone. It's, it's so nice to see a kid holding something with their hands and playing them with their fingers, an object, right, that they have to work to make sound out of versus just getting a play on, on a radio. Or it's a, a, somebody walk around with a real book in their hands, you know, and, and reading it. And I think one of the keys is marrying high tech with high touch again, bringing back that personal relationship, you know, and when I go to a recital or a concert, I leave my phone at home. 
right? Because I don't want to even be tempted to, to look at a message or I got an idea who won the ball game, you know? And even sometimes when I leave the house, my wife will say, well, you, you didn't bring your phone. I said, well, how many years did we never have a phone and we're together and you have a phone? I mean, it just <laughs> it's, true. it's almost like you make lose your phone. Uh, what if I need to get hold of you? I was like, well, we're in the same car, going to the same place. We'll, we'll figure it out. So uh, I think that's important is don't give up on what used to work and make happier people happier without the distractions. Use what the distractions are for your benefit, not for your harm. So with that, hopefully we gave everybody a wonderful reboot. Beverly has a chance to do her clothes. And then we'll come back tomorrow and do it all again, Beverly. Well, just look back, see your wins, keep going, and keep moving forward. There is no reboot. Just keep booting along. It's all good. It'll be okay. Well, and I, That's I, it. I trust Beverly to be right on that. And Charles, I can't thank you enough. Three days in a row, we should figure a way, maybe weekends or something, you can get a regular sure. continuing spot here because that's what makes a difference is the harmony, the collective um, thought, knowledge sharing that we create. And you know what? I come away so much better from just mixing with so many people's ideas and thoughts and welcoming their thoughts and ideas as opposed to defending mine or justifying mine. It's like anything else. It's like new day, new, new way, you know? So with that said, uh, let's say goodbye for now, at least 23 hours. <laughs>